Good morning. It's great to see you all here with us this morning. We've got a group that's up at Broadway Christian Parish this morning. I heard there was 11 or 12 people who went to Broadway and will be serving a meal there at noon for the people on the south, I guess, south central side of South Bend. Do we have other announcements this morning? I know we've got Trunk or Treat coming up this week. Would Deb like to give us an update? I can give you a real microphone. I'll Maybe use both. Others. Stereo. <laughs> I think we're in good shape according to what the sign up paper is. If you've already brought hot dogs and buns to the church, um, you can bring the cider here if you signed up for that or you can just bring it if you're coming there. They said that could just be brought there if you take it. Uh, if you bring it here, though, I think we have people that's gonna transport food. So, different people have said, I put this here, I put that there. If it's a hot dog, or if it's buns, or it looks like candy, or cider, and it's in the church, we're gonna round it up and go. But it might be nice if we had one central location. So if you could take it to the basement. I think Sheila's got candy pretty much gathered up over there. They will still gladly take trunks, okay? They said 21st, but then they told us, keep beating the bushes if anybody else. Now that the weather is a little bit better than it was when we first started talking about it, maybe you'll get brave enough to do that. Uh, there's still papers out there in the vestibule, and if you just give them to Kenneth before you leave, if you got an idea, and I think that's it. If you have a trunk, they're going to start putting them in at 5 o'clock. Um, if you have food donations, if you could get those here to the church by maybe 3, because I'd be here with kids about that time, and I could kind of start rounding up and getting them in there. And I think Karen thought maybe she could help transport food over. If you have buns and things and you want to take them to the school, you can give them to Jamie at door number 10, and she would take those on she thought Tuesday or Wednesday, but Wednesday for sure she'll be there after because she's going to help get some of the food ready. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I probably should have read our notes. Are you going to talk more about that? Uh, yeah, we, are, um, we are moving to the high school because the award ceremony that was supposed to happen isn't happening. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move, in the high, move to the high school uh, just on this side of the track uh, on the football field. So there's enough room to drive in there, and we're going to line the trunks uh, against the fence and bring it because we have every, it just keep everything in one central location. We have the, uh, uh, the, concession, uh, stand the concession stand to work out of. Yep. And That's then it. the trunks will be inside the fence, backed in yes. around, and that'll be a little added then, safety we won't have people in the parking lot where yeah, school parking lots are dangerous places people never go slow it's a security it's a it's a security measure um the game the trunks will be on one side as you walk into the fence the concession it'll be on the left and on the right side will be the games uh, but there'll be one way in and one way out and it was a security uh, a security measure that we felt we needed to take yeah so, and just like it was when it was here, if you didn't have time to bother with a trunk, put on some kind of a silly costume and just come walk around and enjoy. I think that's what made ours here so nice, mm -hmm. was that we just had smiling faces and friendly people. And I think that's what made it grow was the, that kind of spirit that we had among us. So we need that over there too. Other announcements? Other announcements? Um, Rob just sent me a text uh, about the um, supper, about the auction. Um, don't forget about the auction. He says we, uh, that we need people to bring side dishes and or desserts. And uh, he says also remember what items you, whatever items you bring to, to, to sell, uh, please let them be non-garage sale items for the auction. So nicer, bring nicer things. That's November 11th <laughs> at 5 p.m., is that right? Yes, yeah. 5 p.m. All right. More any, food and nice ice items. Okay. Anyone that donating hot chocolate? Except Jared. 
put it in the kitchen. What's that? Anybody that have hot chocolate, put it in the in the kitchen. Okay. Hot chocolate goes to the kitchen. <laughs> Unless it's already made. Any other announcements this morning? We've got a Holiday Bazaar. It's coming up on November 9th from 10 to 7, which is an excellent place to eat. And they need lots of donations for crafts. Crafts, cookies. Cookies. And baked goods for the sale. And baked goods for the sale. Okay. Anyone else? If not, let's begin service with the carrying in of the light. Please stand for our worship song this morning. Number, it's in the hymnal, is number 66. The words will also be on the screen. You may be seated. <laughs> well, now we get to ask that question that we ask every Sunday. But I'm going to ask an additional question on that. Where did you see God? Where were you given an opportunity to show God? Where did you see God? Tuesday morning when I walked into that kitchen and saw all of these ladies making noodles. Yeah. We had more than we've ever had, and it was a lot of fun, and we were done at 2.30. Yeah, y'all were cooking in there, man. Y'all were getting it. Oh, they were doing it, because <laughs> I had a food bank order. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I walked in, they looked at me like, don't just stand there. <laughs> well, you see, it's like this. Uh, I got somewhere to be. Anybody else see God? Well, I'm just going to put this out there. Um, Ken and I have been reading a book called um, When Sinners Say I Do. What's the title again? Um, when, you went, you went, <laughs> <laughs> when Sinners Say I Do. And is just incredible to just not only get more into God's word, but to just see him work in us. Um, Ken and I have been married almost nine years now, and we've been on those curves and those ups and downs and had those uh, really bad moments and really good moments, but um, the growth that I've seen in our marriage lately is just mm -hmm. incredible. And us putting God <laughs> first above all of our selfish needs and all of our, all of our fleshly <laughs> desires is just 
learning to put him mm -hmm. first in everything and including him every day, all day long, is just been amazing. Yeah, I, I recommend that for the younger married couples. When sinners say I do, it's an incredible, it, man, breaks it down for you. Now, of course, baby, we, we are in the midst of people been married 40, 50, 60 years. So, yeah. they, you know, they're up there going, I yeah. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> and all the men are smart. All the men are like. It's awesome. By the grace of God. I um, am fortunate enough to, this morning to have one of my past students sing with us. And not only is it a God sighting, but not only that, but she's a school teacher also. And that makes my heart good. Awesome. Well, welcome. Well, I have seen God this week through my mother. She had a birthday yesterday, and to raise three ordinary girls <laughs> is just a blessing. And I'm glad that you were born yesterday. So. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. She's going to kill me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mama. Happy birthday to you. Love you. <laughs> I was able to go see... Oh, I, I was able to go see Betty Baco, and you know, we darn near forgot about Betty. I mean, I did. I did. Where is she? She's at Pilgrim Manor, and she looked good. You know, I was more blessed. I'm sure she was. But anyway, uh, yeah, if you don't, uh, you know, we just, sometimes we forget our people. that We just don't see them, and we don't think about them, but I'm so glad we remembered Betty. Thank you for going to visit. Christ. Anybody else? Any prayer requests? Any joys? How was this past week? We gave everything God through my first week, week back of of a man thing, and gave the spirit times with a. It was a try to it uh, tried to knock me out with a basketball like maybe three or four times, <laughs> but you got knocked out with a basketball three or four times. Uh, yeah, uh, but anyway, we had a, uh, a practice a game a game yesterday. Uh, hey, even though it was a practice, and uh, we uh, practiced one, and uh, and we and we and uh, we lost, but uh, uh, but uh, God was. It was a there, there with us uh, and guiding us. Awesome. Awesome. Two prayer concerns. Two prayer concerns. Uh, we took a three-day bus tour to uh, southern Indiana, and a very special group of people have uh, given unselfishly to save a historical mansion that sits on a hill uh, in a place called Aurora, Indiana, on the Ohio River. Mm. Also, from there to Madison, and eight hours on a one of the last steam-driven barge boats of its kind in the United States, from Madison to Louisville. Mm. That was a treat, and there is a lot of God along that river. Mm. Praise God. it's going to come the day after truck retreat um, hopefully weather permitting but he had had a small accident stripped over something as a work related thing and in the process of getting checked out they found a mass in his chest mm. and who was standing in my house when we were talking and he said he looked at me and he said does your does your church pray for people and I said we sure do we lay hands and we do he says well, would you ask for prayer for me his name's Jerry and then yesterday, rushing around getting a couple groceries, I ran into a lady I taught with. And uh, where I taught, we had prayer meetings in classrooms before and after school. Mm -hmm. And we helped this lady through her first bout with cancer. 
and she went into remission for quite a long time. She has a new two-year-old grandson, and I ran into her yesterday, and she has a, had a, a cane in her cart, and I said, well, what's going? She said, well, it's back. It's back, and it's, uh, the second time, I think, would have to be harder than the first one. She has a very good attitude. She's already been down for treatments and things. She has more to go through, but if we could keep Andrea in our prayers, uh, just when everything's coming together and enjoying the things that you look forward to all your life, it just seems like. And then every time I had, I had a busy week this week, and finally I just had one of those prayers where you say, I can't do all this, you're just going to have to take some of this for me. Mm -hmm. You know how you made me, so I need some help down here. And it, I could, I, the thought crossed my mind, I can't wait to see how God comes through with this. And he did. He put those people that showed up, talked about things that had been going on for a long time. So um, just a testimony that prayer works. We were talking about that uh, with some other needs downstairs this morning. But uh, we really need to keep each other in prayer. That's, Absolutely. that's the name of it. And I got here too late with corn casserole this morning. So if we could pray for the loaves and the fishes at Broadway Christian to be sufficient and more. I also have um, uh, Andrea to pray for, It'll be our uh, my oldest daughter. She is pregnant with my granddaughter, Harper, and she's not due till November 20th. Um, she had our first uh, granddaughter early, and she's having signs of early labor right now, and she's not due for another month. So um, Andrea and Harper, if you could keep them in your prayers, that would be great. The baby is eight pounds, so if she were to have the baby now, it's, it's okay. She'd be they, said, they said that, but typically I think they're way off because mm -hmm. they don't okay. gain that much until the last month. Well, we'll keep her in <laughs> prayer. Mm -hmm. Anybody else before we go before the Lord? Hey, and, yet the, if, and yet the team needs, hey, it needs prayers because... Uh, this Friday, it, it will be our, our first uh, home game um, at 6 o'clock against it's, uh, it's on Glen, and I, and I believe, uh, I, I, but I think, uh, I, 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 I think from what I heard that, that maybe it, either tomorrow or uh, Tuesday will be our first game, uh, game after it was one of the two, uh, three is, uh, will be our first game, but but the team needs our, our prayers and uh, that God will, uh, will provide a safety uh, for the players. Anybody else before we go to the Lord in prayer? Father God, we just want to thank you so much for the privilege that it is to call you the Lord our God. We want to thank you for the privilege it is to be loved by you, to be created by you, to have relationship with you, and to have a God who's a living God, not a carved out image. that wants to have genuine relationship with us and is able and does have relationship with us, Lord. We ask that uh, as we fellowship today, as we worship you, as we, as we praise you, Lord, that uh, it is a sweet aroma to your nostrils. We know that you inhabit the praises of your people and we being your people give you all glory, honor, and praise this morning. Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come together. Lord, we pray that as we are together, Lord, as we, as we worship together, that, um, that you are revealed. That we are an encouragement to each other. That we get to hear from you through each other and from your Holy Spirit. 
Lord, we lift up all the uh, prayer requests. Uh, we lift up Jerry. We lift up Rich, uh, uh, Rich Martin, Dick Martin, uh, Fritz and Will, Jay Hudson, Hutchinson, Karen Denius. Lord, we lift up our sister Catherine, our sweet sister Catherine. Lord, we ask that you bring healing to her lungs, Lord that you bring healing to her body, Lord. Uh, this this uh, thing has had a hold on her for far too long, Lord. We ask for your healing touch. Lord, we lift up Tom Balding and Roger Redinger, and Phyllis and, and our sweet sister Roseanne. Heal, continue to bring healing to her hip, Lord. Uh, Lord, we lift up Daniel, Shelley, and Mike Chuck, and we lift up the uh, the family of Roseanne Hall. Uh, be in those matters, Lord. Be in those proceedings. Lord. We ask for your grace and your mercy, Lord. We, we ask for your peace. Lord, we lift Betty up to you. Thank you, Lord, for our sisters who extended the hand out to her. Lord, we lift Jerry up to you. Lord, we lift Jean up to you. We lift the girls' uh, basketball team for the first home game. We ask that, Lord, that you, uh, that they that they are prepared, Lord, and that they play in a manner that brings glory to you, Lord. Father God, we lift up the uh, brothers and sisters and the Jewish people whose lives were taken yesterday. And the three cops, Lord, the families, the three families that had to hear that daddy's not coming home. The cops that were taken down, Lord, and we, uh, we pray for your peace and your sovereign rule in this situation, in this horrible tragedy. Jesus, come quickly. Lord, we, uh, regardless of what our flesh tells us, Lord, we lift up the, the suspect in question. We pray that you reveal yourself to the suspect in a way that will blow their minds. We pray for your peace, Lord. Lord, we lift up our government officials to you. We're about worn out with all the TV ads of men and women butchering each other, defaming the character. Lord, we pray that you intervene. And instead of hearing about what another person is doing rotten, Lord, that a person will look at their own three fingers pointing back and say, well, this is the change that I would like to make. Lord, we pray for politics. May it stay out there. But we lift up these officials on the local level, the city level, county, state, at a national level, world level, Lord. And we pray for you to give them wisdom and understanding and break their hearts for your people, for your creation. And Lord, we look forward to the day, Lord, we lift our president up to you. And we lift our, our military personnel that are serving, Lord. And we look for the day, look forward to the day we don't need them but we are worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords face to face and you are our King, you are our President, you are our Defender and there's none other. Until that day physically happens, Lord, may you hear the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We got any children in the house? He's back there playing with his toys. You playing with your toys, man? Yeah, man. It's all right. Where's my guy? Is he coming, Tristan? I can hear him now. Don't call me out. Awesome. Have you ever felt betrayed by a friend? Now, let me give you what that might look like. You're all super cool, right? You hang out all the time, but you're on the playground and your friend decides that he's going to, he or she is going to play with somebody else and not play with you. Have you ever had that happen? How does that feel? Say it again. It feels horrible. It does something on the inside, doesn't it? She's <laughs> like, get the mic out of my face. Yeah, it does something to the inside. It, it, you feel betrayed. You know, hey, I thought we were friends. But all of a sudden, they don't want to play with you, right? There's a little bit of jealousy that kicks in, isn't it? That you feel left out. You feel alone. Yeah. You feel left out and alone. All right, well, we're going to talk about a God. Today, the big kids are going to talk about a God who felt betrayed. And he's going to express how he feels about that. Now, do you still like your friend, love your friend? Because it ends up that he or she comes back to you, right? And you play like nothing. Everything's cool, right? Well, we're going to learn about a God who felt betrayed. And he had to express himself. But because of promises that he made to how Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. He still took them back and he still loves them. Because of the promise that he makes with Jesus Christ. That boys, when we, when we, um, even when we betray God with our actions, okay, don't bite him, man. He's not breakfast, right? But because he sent his son Jesus, it may still hurt him, but just like he forgave the Israelites. Are you hungry, man? Boy, we got to get you fed. Because of the promise that he made through Jesus, he still loves us. But he wants us to, to come back to him. We better pray before these boys start eating the altar. God, thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. And forgive us, Lord, where we, where we betray you. Lord, where one we, we, we play with you, and then all of a sudden we decide we want to play with somebody else. Lord, we um, ask for your mercy and your grace as the kids go play and that they don't eat each other. Lord, and we ask um, that as we hear this song, this next song, and we hear this word, that uh, your grace rest rules and abides in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you can go back to your toys now. <clears throat> My man up here eating his brother.
Scripture lesson this morning comes from Hosea chapter 1, verses 8 through 11. You can find it on page 636 of the Pew Bibles or on the screen up here. After she had weaned Lo Ruhama, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami, which means not my people. For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the Israelites will be like the sand on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. In the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called children of the living God. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will come together. They will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Hmm. Who is our father? Holy Spirit, preach this message. When I first read the book of Hosea, I didn't like it. Because I was looking at it from the perspective of Hosea. We have all been in a relationship where we've been betrayed. Whether it was a significant other, a spouse, or a friend. And for those of us who have unfortunately experienced that, you remember that pain, don't you? The broken trust. How could he do that to me? How could she do that to me? And that significant other that was so significant that you took them, even taking them back, you went through a roller coaster of emotions, didn't you? You loved them. You forgave them. But that pain is real. And I've experienced that. I've been on both sides of that, if I was to keep it real. But being on the side of being betrayed, it's a painful thing. And even if you take them back, there's still that lingering thought, will they do it again? And it causes you to go through this psychological thing. That fear. I want to give it all back to you again, but I can't. Reading Hosea this time, I was a little worried about reading this because all those memories and all those feelings coming back, I didn't want to experience them again. But it's a good thing that I experienced them reading Hosea the previous time that I read it. Because this time, I was able to identify with not so much an angry God, but a hurt God. He has chosen people through Abraham. I will be your God. And he's told them, you will be my people. He made a promise to Abraham. The number of your People will be, it will be as numerous as the sand. All because of that faithful moment that Abram said, Abraham said, Abram said, okay. He said something about his people. That they're going to be disobedient and I'm going to punish them. I'm going to make them slaves to another nation to whoop a knot on their head. Not to be narcissistic, 
but so that they can see that without me, their life is in shambles. Ever since they were released from Egypt, you would think that they would stay on the straight and narrow. But ever since they were released in Egypt, from Egypt, they've told God, you're not enough. We want judges. You're not enough. They got kings. We want kings. You're not enough. And what we see happening here, ladies and gentlemen, is a God that is hurt and at his wit's end. You see, Hosea was a prophet to the uh, northern region of uh, the northern kingdom of Israel during the uh, uh, rule of Jeroboam. Now, Israel is in such a state that it says that, uh, uh, in the beginning, it talks about him, about four other kings. Those were the kings of Judah. My people are split. At this point, Israel is a split nation. You have Israel, and then you have Judah. Uh, so that you understand this in context, what he has done is he has asked Hosea, a minor prophet, to go and marry a promiscuous woman. Some, uh, some versions say an adulterous woman. You see, the Israelites gave to worshiping pagan gods. Baal was a pagan god who they, instead of trusting God, they entrusted Baal for the fertilization of their property, of their, of their ground, fertilization of them. There were other gods that they, they worshipped to for, for fertilization. And the pagan temple had prostitutes. And so the typical, uh, the way it would work is that uh, the men would go to the temple, take a prostitute. They would actually pray to Baal for fertilization. And they would take these prostitutes. That's just a little part of what Israel had going on. You see, our God is a, a jealous God. He has given us Jesus, his son, to die for our sins so that we may remain in relationship with him. But he's still a jealous God, and he doesn't share space with anybody. There's only room in his kingdom for one God. What Israel has done is taken on other pagan gods. Because once again, they've told God, you're not enough. So he tells Hosea, see, a prophet's assignment, first of all, we can look at Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea and all them and be like, oh, well, they're prophets. You can look at Ken and Rob and be like, well, they're pastors. Well, folks, as I said the last time I preached, that's really not a fun feat. I mean, it's an honor to be a vocal box for the Lord. But there's something that you have to be careful to do as a pastor, as a prophet, as a follower of Christ who's assigned to give the message of God. You have to be sure that you are on your stuff and that you speak only, only what God tells you to speak. You do only what God tells you to do. Because if you don't, there are consequences. For the prophets, if they didn't do what God told them to do, if they didn't say exactly what, they, what he told them to say, I don't need your, uh, he's not asking for our opinions. 
He's not asking for our political stances. He's asking us to speak, thus saith the Lord. And back in the day, if you didn't do it, if they, if they strayed from the right or to the left, if they strayed to the right or the left, they were killed. And there are consequences for pastors today. They stray to the right, the left. In this situation, this prophet was told to marry an adulterous woman, a promiscuous woman. We don't know if she was one of the prostitutes. It doesn't tell us. And we don't know if she was a virgin. He says, I want you to marry a promiscuous woman, and I want you to have three children with them. Now, you only read about the one. Let me tell you about the others. So he married Gomer, the daughter of Deblaim. Okay, so let me start. The word of the Lord came to Hosea, son of Barry. During the, reign, uh, during the reigns of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, these were the kings of Judah. And during the reign of Jeroboam, son of Jeho- Je- 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 Jehoash, king of Israel, a split kingdom. Kind of like a split church. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land, the land is guilty of the vilest adultery. The vilest. They've taken pagan gods. They've made room for anything other than the Lord our God. Then the Lord say, uh, then the Lord say to, uh, to Hosea, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, call him Jezreel, because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre of Jezreel. And I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. Now, uh, I don't have time to go into it. Second Kings chapters 9 and chapters 10 talks about Jehu and what he did in Jezreel. God gave him an assignment, but he took it to a whole nother level that God didn't tell him to take it to. Read it. Check it out for yourself. And I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day, I will, bring, I will break Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. Then the Lord said to Hosea, call her Lo Rahama, Lo Rahama, Ruhama, for I will no longer love the house of Israel, that I should all, that I should at all forgive them. Yet I will show love to the house of Judah, and I will save them. Not by bow, sword, or battle, or by horse, or horsemen. And horsemen, but by the Lord their God. After she weaned Rehama, Gomer had another son. This is where we pick up. Then the Lord said, Call him Lo Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet, it's not me. Uh, yet, the Israelites will be like the sand of, on the seashore, which cannot be measured or counted. So he's remembering his promise to Abraham. In that place where it is said to them, where it was said to them, you are not my people, they will be called the sons of the living God. Mm. The people of Judah and the people of Israel will be reunited. And they will appoint one leader and will come up out of the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Go marry an adulterous woman. Because I need the people to see through you how they've treated me. You know, there's something that was said. I was listening to this pastor last night. And there was something that was said that was interesting to me. 
when they were in exile, and when they were in captivity the many times, that had to bring on a mental consequence. That had to bring on some anxieties and some depressions. Their minds got conditioned to think a certain way. To where their paganism becomes an everyday normal thing. And they forget about their God. See, it's easier to worship something that is seen. But that's not faith. Faith is, true faith is things hoped for, things unseen. And we can... We can dog the Israelites. How many times have you read the scriptures and you said, God, why can't they just get it together? They got God right there. But the trouble was is that they had something that was unseen. They've had their prophets telling them what thus saith the Lord, but they've not seen them. There are no pictures of God. There's no image of God. And that is declared by him on purpose. Because he, he is much bigger than our sensual perception. He's much bigger than what we can comprehend in our minds. But we try, don't we? We try to put them in that box because it's easier for us to understand, right? They, they worship these pagan gods because it was something they can wrap their mind around. But God is much bigger than our sensual perceptions. He is too huge for us to make him bound to our own understanding. Remember, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. Huh. Our intellect. We try to understand him intellectually. And we're left with knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. That's what Solomon said, right? Knowledge puffs up. Where's the faith in the thing that we can see? Where is true faith in the thing that we can understand? No. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Just like the Israelites, Satan doesn't mind you trusting in your sensual perception of God. He doesn't mind you being an intellectual Christian. He doesn't mind you identifying yourself as Christian. Where you cause trouble for him is when you worship him in spirit and in truth. So what happens is God deposits into your spirit 
see. Jesus came. He did what he came to do so that we can remain in relationship. And who did he tell the disciples he was sending back for them? Don't worry, I'll wait. This is participation. This ain't spectator sport. Say it again. The Holy Spirit. I will send you my spirit who will teach you all things. He will be your counselor. He will teach you in all truths. He will be the connection. Read Hosea. Read Hosea. God goes through the same emotions that those of us who have been cheated on, those of us who have been betrayed, you read Hosea, he goes through the same roller coaster of emotions, but in the end, because of a promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he takes them back. Now, some of them, most of them, actually, almost all of them didn't make it into the promised land. But it doesn't mean that he didn't love them. Let's talk about the three fingers pointing back. What in your life, and you be honest with yourself, Where in your life, and what do you have in your life that tells God he's not enough? Now, Christ came to die for sinners, right? That's what they said in 1 Timothy 1.15. Christ came to die for sinners, and Paul said, of which I am the chief. I know my stuff. We're in a sweet season right now because we owned up to our stuff. And God drew us to a place of brokenness to where we had to say, forget our intellect, forget my intellect, forget our, our own understanding, forget our control. You know why you control, why you're big in control? Because you're little in trust. A person, not you, I don't mean, I'm just talking about me. A person who's big on control is very little in the area of trust. But God's calling you to trust him. Where in your life are you telling God that he's not enough? Where in your life are you doing something as synonymous as giving yourself to pagan gods? Where in your life do you need to stop being an intellectual, good Christian? And you need to give to the Spirit of God, worshiping Him in spirit and truth. There's liberty on that side, folks. And the beautiful thing about Him sending His Son, Jesus, is that if we confess our sins, I say it every, almost every time I preach, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's as though we've never done it. It's time for us as followers of Christ in any area we need to, to come back home. To grow in our relationship with this God. To grow in, this rela grow in our relationship with each other. And take this love that we build in here and grow in relationship with our community. Hurting people out there and those who come in here need to know about this God. And not from me or Rob preaching on Sunday mornings. With our actions. Scripture says they will know that we are his by what? Anybody know? 
They will know that we are his by how we love each other. How we love him. Because let me tell you something, folks. It's sweet, isn't it, baby? I had some pagan gods in my life. I was worshiping him more from a sensual perception than a spiritual perception in areas of my life. But his word is true in that a broken and contrite heart you will not despise. When you come to him with a broken heart and you confess that thing, He's faithful and just to cleanse you. He forgives you. He's faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And it's to say, come on. Because see, it's his people. When he sees us, he sees his son Jesus. That's good news, isn't it? For those of us who know what we've done in our lifetimes, that's good news. He is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Where are you? We're going to wrap up this now. But where are you? Be honest with yourselves. You ain't got to say nothing now. To say nothing out loud. But he knows. Where are you? You have a loving God who doesn't want to share anymore. He doesn't want to share with our paganism. He doesn't want to share with our money. He doesn't want to share with our business. He doesn't want to share with anything that is on a pedestal that only belongs to him. He created us. He gave up everything so that he can remain with us and we remain with him. But there's some skin in the game. There's some skin in the game. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to thank you so much for this word, this time. <sighs> Forgive me, Lord, where I dropped the ball. Forgive me for times in my life that I've said you're not enough. Thank you for the forgiveness that you lend, Lord. May people bow their hearts to you today, Lord, even now, even while the choir sings. And may there be a whole lot of fresh starts happening today. You are spirit. And we must worship you, spirit and truth. And as for me and my house, Lord, your scripture says, choose this day whom you will serve. Will you serve your pagan gods? Will you serve the things that I've given you? <laughs> That's been given to you, or will you serve the Lord? As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We give you all glory, honor, and praise. In the name of our matchless Messiah, our King of kings, our Lord of lords. Amen. Can we have the ushers come forward?
सेक्सिस्ट कहोगे I told him in a black church we like you better sing that song. <laughs> Thank you for the provision that you've given us. It's all yours but you only ask for a portion of it. Lord, it's a reminder that we don't serve it, we serve you. So we ask that you are glorified with our giving and that, uh, Lord, you show us how to use it. Choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. There is a hurting world out there. There are hurting people in here who need to know that there is a real God, a real creator who gave up his son, who has sent his holy spirit just for them. Choose this day whom you will serve. Amen.